Hey there friends, the movie creator here. Ever heard of Anchor? Anchor gives you everything you may need in one place for free in order to make a podcast. It can be done right from your phone or computer. Anchor's creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great and it's ready for prime time. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard wherever podcasts are available. Platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and even Google Podcasts. Also, you can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. To get started, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. Hello, and welcome to the Movie Grader and Friends podcast. The podcast made by a movie enthusiast for all you other movie enthusiasts. Sit back with a tub of popcorn as movies, both new and old, from cult classics to all-time favorites, blockbusters, and award winners get discussed and reviewed. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Movie Grader and Friends podcast. I am Billy, the Movie Grader, and today I am once again joined by one of my best friends, Justin. Say hello, Justin. Hey, guys. We are here to talk about the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Far From Home, starring Tom Holland and Jake Gyllenhaal. Per IMDb's synopsis, Spider-Man Far From Home's plot is as follows. Following the events of Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man must step up to take on a new threat in a world that has changed forever. Justin, your thoughts on the plot? I knew you were skeptical before seeing it. Yeah, uh, you know, having been a comic book head when I was a youth and, you know, still following the properties, uh, sometimes in book form, but usually, you know, MCU, great movies. You know, one of my favorite books when I was a kid outside on Kenny X-Men was Spider-Man. Like, uh, Amazing Spider-Man and Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man. So, you know, got a lot of uh, experience with Mysterio. And, you know, that whole, uh, he came from, you know, a rift in the multiverse due to the Infinity Stone usage. I was a bit skeptical on that whole background. Um, I'm sure Spider-Man heads out there know exactly what I'm referring to. But um, I was I was pleasantly surprised to see uh, what they ended up doing with Mysterio and Jake Gyllenhaal killed it as Mysterio, like he tends to kill it in all his Absolutely. Roles. Yeah. You yeah. were happy that they stayed, stayed true to the source material? Definitely, definitely. I thought it was going to go a way different route. Um, you know, there's always been tweaks to every story with the MCU, but naturally, in, by and large, all the tweaks have been pretty good. Um, and I just thought from seeing the, the uh, end game, you know, after credit scene... Oh, which and starts off, actually, of Far right, From Home. exactly, which I didn't know at the time was the start of Far we're, From Home. We're not going to spoil anything yeah, here, just so you guys that. know. Was, go see know. the movie. Yeah, if anyone out there hasn't seen Endgame yet, you might want to go see the re-release. The you do right need now. to see Endgame. Um, uh, yeah. that, that's actually a really important uh, point here. It is, actually. You must see Endgame yeah. before you see Spider-Man Far From Home. I agree. For those people still For those rock. five people that haven't seen <laughs> right. Endgame yet. Still living under a rock or secluded in like the great you know Pacific Northwest somewhere in the middle of uh, Sequoias. And what What's wrong with you? Yeah, uh, you might want to go see Endgame by now. But it's, um, it's been awesome. I've seen it three times already. Justin's seen it twice. Yeah, and it's just... It's greatness. And it ties into this directly. I think actually it will tie into everything in Phase 4 going forward but um yeah spider-man far from home launches actually phase four right exactly which is pretty cool and uh and it's also correct if i'm wrong the uh culmination of the infinity stone saga it is that's somewhere it is as well so it's you know it's got a little dual role there it's very important for for the mcu and and you know i liked this has come from someone who again thinks andrew garfield was the best spider-man you know, I, like, I highly disagree. Like, but I think Tom Holland I'm is giving, the best Spider-Man. I'm going to give Tom Holland his props. Like, I actually, this is, to me, the best spider movie that's been made. Yeah, I, I agree there, out too. Out of all of them. Out of the, the first, this is actually my second time seeing Far From Home. After the first time I saw it, I thought Homecoming was still a little bit better. But after seeing it a second time, I have to agree with Justin. I think this is... The best Spider-Man movie to date. Yeah, to date, by far. And, you know, again, I, I still like my man Andrew Garfield and the Amazing Spider-Man, even the second one, Amazing Spider-Man 2. With, I walked out of that one. Which I still think is great. I thought Jamie Foxx was great as Electro. I like the twist they did on him. Giamatti is the rhino, whatever. That was stupid. That was the first movie I ever walked out but of. But, I, I, again, like, I got to give Tom Holland his props. I didn't really like uh, Homecoming that much. I didn't like 
Michael Keaton as the vulture, I thought out of all the villains, it was a stupid they could have like brought into the the fold for MC. They made it the vulture. Like I was like, what? What's this tier three dude like doing here? Like, but whatever. Like it was this actually made up for far from home mistake, far from home mistakes, and it pushed the whole Spidey MJ dynamic. He's talking about homecomings mistakes. Sorry for <laughs> homecomings mistakes. It's okay. And it pushed the whole. You know, uh, Spidey MJ dynamic to a new level, and I could just tell that it set a new bar. Absolutely for Spidey movies. Absolutely, it set a new bar and, for Spidey. And at, at like the core of it, Far From Home really is. To be honest, it's a teenage romance, yeah. basically teenage yeah. romance comedy. It's not really a superhero movie. No. If you want to, if you want us to be honest, a few of our favorite scenes. Uh, we loved how the movie opened with the end game end credit scene. The movie also, you know, immediately jumps right into a Venice scene where Venice gets destroyed. We're not going to say how, but pretty, it yeah, is very cool. cool. Yeah, the special effects in the movie were pretty amazing. Yeah, and you know, a, a big portion of the movie's plot deals with, in a way, special effects. Yeah. It's exactly. illusions, dealing with illusions and yeah. fooling people yeah. and making yourself to be a better person than you actually are in order to hold or yourself. Or a bigger person, more grandiose Or a bigger person, person. Yeah, it's, you are. It's, yeah. It's all about fooling people and yeah. tricking people, yeah. you know, to put on an image, which, really isn't, which isn't, you know, which isn't a good character trait, but... <laughs> yeah, it was really good in, in the plot in that regard, like, like there was a, a little message to it, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Billy's right. At its core, it is a teenage rom com, mm -hmm. and it does that that angle well. But I also like the interplay of, uh, you know, like uh, Peter with his elders. Oh yeah, the elders being Nick Fury. Yeah, and Aunt Happy May, Hogan. Happy Hogan, right? Yeah. I mean, that and, and Aunt May. And Aunt May, like, and uh, Marissa Tomei. Hey, well, yeah. <laughs> let's just leave that alone. We already know about. Yeah. Marissa Tomei. And Marissa the, Tomei yeah. was fantastic. Oh, God. Love her. In every uh, sense of the word. Yeah. And, uh... Nick know, Fury's also great. I mean, Sam, Samuel Sam Jackson. Jay is Sam J. He is obviously. the legend. I mean... Yeah, you already know how uh, Enough said. <laughs> yeah, he, he kills it as that. He's, um, he's the best. Nick Fury is always... He's the best. Um, But definitely like John Favreau and Marissa Tomei. Oh, John Favreau was fantastic. More developed yeah. roles in this. Um, a little nod to Robert Downey for a hot minute. Like, yeah. which I like, too. You know, that was kind of cool. Yep. There's a lot of uh, nods to Robert Downey in there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, everybody held their own. Um, and even, like, you know, the even Peter's dynamic with the students, the guy that plays Flash, you know, the the whole Peter-Ned dynamic. Oh, Ned, Ned almost steals the show. I think, he's yeah, so Ned good. actually kills it better as a student than Peter. Oh, he's so this, funny. In this one. Um, he's so funny. And then just MJ, like, I just, I always liked her. Like, I just, I like her quirky, emo, MJ type. Yeah, Zendaya she kills it as, as, as just, MJ. And it's just like... She's perfect. She's perfect as MJ. Like, for this MJ they're doing. This is, you know, not the not the ubiquitous MJ, all confident yeah. supermodel. She does a fantastic Absol job. Yeah, she she's just, a, yeah, she's great. She's she's phenomenal. And also, too, another, another funny part that I liked is Peter's initial turn with uh, Edith. Oh, that was great. I'm not going to tell you what Edith stands that for. It's great. an acronym. Yeah. Go see the movie, and it's very funny. <laughs> it's, his his first turn with Edith is hilarious, to say the least. <laughs> and also, just to touch on this too, like you know, there was nods to Stark, but one of the best things about the MCU, at least since you know the introduction of, I would say, I mean, it's always been there, even in Iron Man One, but the tech started really getting. Uh, emphasize oh yeah just yeah around you know iron man 2 avengers 1 yeah. like and the tech in this it's just it's pretty insane it's, it's, it's all, on another level. although it really didn't get used much it's until like ready, the end yeah. the end fighting sequence that takes place in london of course but, it's on another level. but it is pretty cool i mean don't get me wrong this there is plenty of action to go around in this movie yeah. but it's really not like a superhero movie like the avengers was yeah it's, it's it is different I agree, uh, all, but it's still great. It's it's something everybody should see after they have seen Endgame. Yeah, for those five people out there. I reiterate after <laughs> after you've seen Endgame. Yeah. I mean, maybe Endgame's already been spoiled for you. We're not going to do that. No. Nope. But um, let's see. Any improvements that you could think of, Justin? What they could have done better? At the end of the day, I just wanted to see more Mysterio origin. 
Yeah, flesh him out a bit more. And I like went that. into it a little bit, you know, like... They did touch on it. And they talked about his connection to Stark and whatnot, it, but they could have went deeper. I mean, I also wanted to see more of, like, the real Spider-Man suit, because... That too. Because, honestly, they put him in this makeshift Spider-Man suit throughout the movie, but it is funny, but I would like to see the new Spider-Man classic-style suit yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, you know, a minor gripe, not a deal-breaker, of course. But that's just, that was really honestly the only issue I had with it. Yeah, and that's a good point. It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if that's my biggest issue, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just complaining over spilled milk, really. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I was fine with it. It was yeah. it was great. Yeah. And it was, I, re, I really did enjoy it. It was a fantastic movie. It, it, it really, it really made you think of summer vacations growing up as a kid and, and, you know in high school in first, high school first loves, yeah second yeah. loves so, yeah second that's, loves. A, that's true all those awkward high school right uh, you know what quote unquote drama yeah. <laughs> relationships yeah. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that stuff that was just so insignificant but you know to you as a kid was a big deal yeah. when you're looking back on it you would you know just laugh at yourself how silly it was right. whatever you guys were broken up over right the movie does kind of make fun of that too it had the summer love vibe you know yeah there's 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 summer love flings in there and you know they're 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 teenagers they're in high school still (laughs) and it's it's funny it's it's it's, it it was a great movie it's it's it's, a summer blockbuster in every sense of the word oh yeah absolutely it's spider-man's killing it in the box office you know just just so you can get a sense of of where when we're recording this, I believe it's been, let's see, t- yeah, two weeks since Spider Man's been released, actually, and um, we decided to do the podcast. You know, better late than never, because we think you guys should, would enjoy seeing this movie if you haven't already again, and even more so if um, for the five people that still haven't seen Endgame, again, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that pretty much wraps it up for Spider-Man Far From Home. We really enjoyed it. We think you will enjoy it too. If you t- if you take our word or words of advice and go see it, you absolutely should. I wanted to say thank you for your time. And please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TheMovieGrader. And please visit my website, www.TheMovieGrader.com. Please like and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. It is available on most podcast platforms such as Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. It is coming soon to Apple Podcasts. Again, thank you for your time. Please email themoviegrader at gmail.com with any comments or questions, and we will see you soon. Thanks.